I'm Joel Rosenthal, President of the Carnegie Council. For almost 100 years, the Council has been the voice for ethics in international affairs. This month, please give to our annual fund drive. To donate now, please press the pause button. After you give, you'll return to this video. Thanks for your support. It's certainly true that there are belligerent verses in the Quran, uh, and people can fasten on to them. But uh, the way I would look at it is, uh, the Quran or the Bible, is it's a menu of options. And the question is, why do people choose to focus on one kind of verse rather than another at any, at any given time? And the, uh, the answer um, I came up with is really, I think, pretty commonsensical, I, I hope. I mean, the people who agree with it think it's commonsensical. <laughs> people who don't think it's crazy. But uh, um, the... the uh, and, and the idea is basically that uh, if one group of, of believers, members of one religion, see members of another religion as people that they can, in some sense, do business with, can profit through interaction with, uh, and they don't find them a threat to their material interests, then you're much more likely to see the tolerant side of the religion, okay? Whereas uh, if... if and, I, and I, I kind of dress this up in game theoretical terminology. I won't, I won't bore you with much of that. Uh, it's not, in a, in a sense, essential. But that's called a non-zero-sum game. When two people uh, can, can both win through interaction, okay, that's a non-zero-sum game. A zero-sum game is when, is when one of them has to win and one of them has to lose. So when you play tennis with somebody, that's a zero-sum game. Every point is good for one of you, bad for the other, okay? Whereas if you're playing doubles, your relationship with your teammate is non-zero-sum. Every point is good for both of you or bad for the other. So the, your, the sum of your fortunes don't add up to zero. They, they're either positive or negative. And then in real life, uh, non-zero-sum games are seldom that simple, but you see them all the time. People doing economic exchange because they think they can both benefit or getting together to form a club because they have a common interest. Um, there are all kinds of ways to, to, for mutual benefit uh, to occur. And my argument is that if people view a relationship as fundamentally zero-sum, this is if one religious group thinks that, that a relationship is fundamentally zero-sum, um, then, uh, then you're more likely to see the belligerent side. If they think the only way we can win is for them to lose, or if they think that, you know, they want... So land is a very common... Uh, uh, fights over land are zero-sum, and I think often when you look at <coughs> some... Uh, Sometimes, certainly, when you look at what is described as a religious conflict, underlying it is, is, is a more fundamental kind of struggle over land or something. In fact, I've, uh, I don't know if, the, if many of you know who the so-called new atheists are. There are these, these uh, kind of, there's, there's a group of people thought of as the new, the new atheists for reasons I won't get into, Richard Dawkins and so on. Um, but, but one of the things that characterizes them is they think that religion is, the, is pretty much the root of all evil, or a lot of it. And... Um, I've gotten into some kind of arguments with them because I, I, I believe that religious conflicts are really not fundamentally about religion, but they have these, these underlying causes. So, for example, one of the so-called new atheists, Richard Dawkins, wrote in his uh, best-selling book, The God Delusion, that if it weren't for religion, there would be no Israel-Palestine conflict. And I just think that shows not a very thoroughgoing uh, historical understanding of the conflict. The original Zionists were not, were not especially religious. They were secular. Um, the original Palestinian reaction against uh, the existence of Israel was not a religious thing. It was more ethnic and nationalistic. Um, as time goes on, it does, it does as it simmers, it can uh, be begin drawing on kind of religion, uh, you know, religious resources, you might say, to fuel the conflict. But that doesn't mean that's its uh, underlying problem. So anyway, this is the, the, uh, the view in the book is that uh, that this is what brings out the, 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 the best and the worst religion is these kind of often unconscious perceptions of whether somebody is like zero-sum, that is an enemy or a rival, you know, whether there's, there's some irreconcilable conflict between the two of you over some resource or something, um, or whether you just sense that they don't respect you enough to do business with you, okay? So respect uh, is an example of a, a cue that I think the human mind is kind of designed to pick up on as, 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 as evidence of whether a relation can be potentially non-zero sum, okay? Um, so so I, I think it depends very much on whether um, you see the relationship as one of potential mutual benefit or not. Mm -hmm.